In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 9, Section 3, you know, calculate around the last two problems for the problem solving before the grid end. So these are more difficult questions. Let's take a look at 14 and 15. In which of the following does the shaded region represent the solution set in XY applying to the system of inequalities above? So we have two inequalities and we have to find the solutions. And so they actually give us the graph for both of these. You don't even have to worry about graphing them. And so Let's start with this first inequality here. We have y is greater than or equal to x plus two. So we know it's an upward opening parabola, oh, sorry, line, and the y-intercept is two. So here's the first line. It's gonna be this one right here. So they, they graphed it for all of us. And all you have to do is find the solution. So when you have an inequality, greater than or equal is a solid line. If it's um, just greater than, it'd be a dashed line, but that doesn't really apply here we're trying to find on what side of the line are the solutions. And so a good technique for this, this type of problem is if you're ever uncertain, plug in zero, zero, which is really just the easiest point, right? And if zero, zero works, it's on that side where, which contains the origin. If not, it's on the other side. And so if you're ever, like I said, a little uh, unsure which side to shade, let's plug in. So here's the origin down here. All right, if we plug in zero, zero, is zero greater than zero plus two? Is zero greater than two? No, so it is not this side, it is this side for this first line, right? It's this side, okay? Again, the second line, you don't really have to waste your time graphing this in, or the line because it's already given, right? We know, I mean, I'll just, I'll just simplify it a little bit. So if we had three y, and then we subtract 2x, so we have less than or equal to negative 2x plus 6. So don't even worry about dividing this by 3 because we know it's a negative slope and it has a y-intercept of 2 when we divide it out, but it's the other line. So just like I said before, let's plug in 0, 0 and see if it works to see what side of the shade it should be. So is 0 less than zero plus six, yeah, so this one does work, and I'll use a different color here, and so remember, this one didn't work here, so here's the line here, the second line, it's this line here, so because zero, zero does work, it's gonna be shaded on this side, and where is the point where you have solutions where they overlap, and we can see the answer here is B, right, this is where they both, I should have used a different color here, this is where they both overlap together, and really not too hard for number 14, that question. All right, let's take a look at the last one, number 15. What is the set of all solutions to the equation? And we have choices. Now, whenever you see a question looking for the solutions, the solution set, and you see it, um, an equation like this, the mistake in my mind most students make is they go ahead and do it academically. And so what I mean by that is they just solve it, and if we could square both sides and we'd get just x plus two on the left. And this is gonna be just x squared when we square it. And then I'll just bring everything over to the right side. We get x squared minus x minus two equals zero. And then we can factor it to get the solutions. So two factors, its product is negative two and sum is negative one. So it's just gonna be x minus two and x plus one. So those solutions, when we solve it, would be two and negative one, but you can't stop there. So whenever the question says all the solutions, you can't just stop here and pick A. You have to plug them back in to see if they work, because otherwise you can end up what's called a false positive. And so if we plug these in, two and negative one, let's plug in two here. Two plus two is four, the square root of four is two. Does that equal negative two? Absolutely not. Now. Just as to explain, like some students say, well, didn't we have the square root of four? So isn't the square root of four plus or minus two? Yes, but when you have a solution set, we're only talking about the principal square root, which is always positive. Just remember that. So two does not equal negative two. Don't do the negative, it's only the positive. So that's out. And let's try, so two did not work. And let's try negative one. So negative one plus two, that's positive one. The square root of one is one. Does that equal, remember our x is negative one and there's a negative sign. So don't get confused by that. So it's really negative, negative one, and that does work. 
And so the answer here is just negative one, but let's go back to what I said originally. Don't waste your time with all this. Why? Because even if you solve it the academic way, you have to plug them back in. So what's a much better efficient way of doing it? Plug in the answers. And so you could have wasted, you saved all this time and eliminate the chance to make a careless mistake if you just say, all right, I would just start with, let's say, either negative one or two. Remember what I talked about, about principal square root has to be positive. And if you tried negative one and it worked, then you'd really be down to A or B, and it, then two didn't work. But use the answers because you have to plug them in anyway. So the answer here is 